Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more Automation and BMNG Drive. Uh, today, as you probably can tell, we are creating our very own competitor to the Chevrolet C8 Corvette. Uh, and for those of you guys who have been living under a rock the past months or years, uh, the C8 Corvette Chevrolet Corvette, uh, the C8 generation, so the 8th generation Chevrolet Corvette, uh, is a mid-engine rear-wheel drive sports car, which is a bit of a complete U-turn from the traditional Corvette philosophy, front-engine rear-wheel drive. Now we're mid-engine, so we're uh, changing up quite a bit of the vehicle, uh, and some people like that, some people don't like that. I personally uh, am welcome, I'm open to a uh, mid-engine Corvette. We'll see how it goes, uh, but today we're creating our very own, basically, so we're going to start off with a partial aluminum monocoque. This is a 2020 car, I'm not sure if I like this body, uh, glued aluminum. So the goal here is to get this thing under um, the price of the Corvette and just beat it in every aspect, basically. So the C8 Corvette uh, starts at $59,995 um, US dollars uh, in 2020. Uh, we are in automation dollars, which is 2012 US dollars. Uh, so that's about $53,000. We have to try to beat the C8 Corvette in performance for less money. So it's going to be a challenge. Uh, I think we'll do a transverse engine. I'm not thinking we'll do a V8. I don't think we can afford it. Um, if we can't, great. If not, well, then that's that's not great, obviously. Uh, we will start off with a flat plane crank V8. All aluminum sounds fine. A four valve. We don't need VVL. This is just a smaller V8. We can go for a five liter V8, I think, maybe. A five liter flat plane crank V8. That sounds fine, actually. We'll go for a five valve as well. Why not, actually? We'll go for cast iron flat. Yeah, we'll go for lightweight forged. We'll go for forged. And we will go a nice high count profile, 80 to start. Uh, NA, go for direct injection, twin, performance, and a premium. And a long tube, we'll go high flow three-way baffled, a reverse flow, and then straight through, I think. So not a full straight through exhaust, but still a pretty, a pretty uh, high flow exhaust. So right now we are making 400 horsepower, which is less than the 495 the C8 makes. Uh, but we, we, we have some good advantages right here. We've got a pretty good efficiency, the engine. We have a lot of octane to play with, so we can go to 11 compression. And a bit higher in the fuel, I think 14.0 is fine for the fuel. We could probably even settle with a 2.5 inch exhaust, that'll save a tiny bit of weight. 3 pounds is pretty welcome. And 8,000 RPM is probably a fine amount to rev to at the start. So 8,000 RPM, can we actually get away with getting cheaper? Okay, so we can get cheaper. Uh, cheaper con rods. We'll keep it as flat plane crank because it's going to sound phenomenal. We're already 490 horsepower. We are already pretty much competing with the CA Corvette horsepower wise. Uh, let's go quickly to the body here. Just see what everything else costs us. So we need a 7 speed double clutch. We need that. Electric LSD. Sports compound tires. We need some big AF tires though. Like 365 is a, similar to what the Corvette has. I think it's still smaller. And we'll go... A fair size here, so 19 inch wheels, but pretty thick tires. We can go 20 inch wheels, maybe. That's a little bit thick, but this is 2020, so all tires are massive nowadays. I like that though. We'll go for three piston 12 inches and two piston 12 inches to start. We'll probably change that up a bit bigger. Fully clad under tray to help with some aerodynamics. Uh, sport will go for premium input. We can go for standard. This is a sports car, um, doesn't have to be the best. We'll go for variable, like, this is the base model, this is the base model too, like, you know, we're gonna beat it. Uh, just electric, not variable. And progressive springs, so nothing too crazy. 22 MPG, uh, we weigh about the same as the C8 Corvette, but we are getting a slower 0-60, to 60, which is actually not that much slower than I thought, that's, that's not bad. We'll set this thing to go pretty fast, and we'll lower the speed limiter, just to 200 kilometers an hour, because that'll save us some cash. So right now, we are less, we're around the same price as the C8. The C8 is around $52,000 in automation. Uh, we're at 56, which kind of sucks. And we're slower. So we're going to make more power. Um, can we not make all-wheel is, is, uh, is all-wheel drive not an option for this? Is it possible? Ah, we can't do all-wheel drive. Well, what if we do? I hate to be, oh wait, it was a transverse engine already. Oh shoot, eh? We can't get all-wheel drive in this bad boy. Ooh, that's gonna be a little scary. It's gonna be a scary 0-60. to 60. I don't think we could beat it, honestly. That'll honestly be tough, Okay, Well, let's work on the engine quickly here. Let's increase the cam profile. 
bit higher. We'll increase the revs a bit more. 8,182. You know what? We'll increase it to... You know, we can be slightly unreliable at the high revs. That's okay, I think. Not the best idea, but we can do it. Uh, we'll increase... I think we can do... Uh, higher compression. We'll do even, what, like 12... 13 to 1 is pretty high. 12... 12.5 12 to 1. Still a very high compression ratio, not gonna lie. And we'll just go for an ignition, ignition timing, that sounds... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so... 515... 520 horsepower? 520 horse? Ooh, 530. So five, okay, this is fine. 535 horse and 390 torque. So less torque, but more horsepower than the C8 Corvette. 060 is 33, so not the numbers that you want to see, obviously. Uh, we actually won't even limit the top speed. We'll just leave it as is. We gotta find money uh, and save it elsewhere, basically. The brakes are fine. They are, they are coping for now. Um, fuel economy, honestly, is fine. We could probably save money and not go underclad. Probably. We could probably go less safety, maybe? Let's save some weight. Better 0 to 60. 3.2. We get a better 0 to 60. No, than 3.2 right now. Okay, so we're, we're slowly getting there. How about some wider tires in the rear than we already have? Oh, we are we are literally at max size. Oh, that's not great at all. Oh, we can't get any wider in this car. Oh. I don't like that. We already have a max... Like, we can't do semi-slicks, that's just too wild for what this is. And, like, I don't think front grip really matters all that much. That's okay, though. This is gonna be a tough car to replicate, really. Uh, we'll tune to Sport Tune. We're getting zero off-road. That's actually, that's actually fine. That's, I'll take that. That's, that's an okay off-road amount. So, AHS Steel will be more expensive, I think. So, 53000 Actually, it's a little bit cheaper. Yeah, we got three thousand dollars cheaper. What about carbon fiber? Definitely too expensive to say. We, we cannot save money. So we can go HS steel maybe, and we can like try to. Go on carbon fiber body panels is it too expensive. Sixty one. Oof. Like we could have a car that's a bit more expensive than a C. It could be, it could be a bit more expensive. Okay, we can do steel there. Okay, no, no, now we're getting there. So steel, a steel chassis, carbon fiber panels, that's doable. You know, that's, that's, that's actually, that's doable. I'm sure a company could probably try to pull that off. 063.1 now, now we are definitely fast. Um, honestly, we're basically like in the same territory as McLaren, uh, like a 600 LT, 570S kind of thing. We are in the same category as that pretty much. Now we can save some money doing a few things. So I'm lower than the safety just a bit because we can probably we can probably afford that. Not the safest car, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but we're still doing it. 63 grand, a little expensive, not gonna lie again. Um, a little expensive. What if we do 60... Uh, we go for... I'm gonna see what the price is. So we need to... 53,300 is what the C8 Corvette costs in automation dollars. Now what if we go for our current car? So right now our car costs the approximate of $70,000. So we're, we're $10,000 more than a C8 Corvette. And so far, we're a bit slower. This, I'll get us into three seconds. But this is the base, oh, this is not the base model anymore. This is not the base model if we're, uh... We can't do semi-slicks, that's, that's what, we cannot do that. Like, the engine, you know what, it might not be faster. But it, it does rev higher. It does rev higher, like, I'll give it that. We can go, we can go a little more fuel, I think. Like 550 horse, that's even better now. Deer 60 is still 3.1. We're at 2,900 pounds. Our car is so gosh darn light, it's crazy. We can't do much really to... to uh... Like, we can get 2.9 with semi-slicks, but... I mean, semi-slicks are streetable tires. You can get them on the... Like, you can get them. Like, the, the, the Dodge Demon semi-slicks, basically. Uh, basically slick tires, I guess. Some of slicks, you know, I'm, I'm sure that's possible to get them, right? It's, it's doable. Uh, we can do a couple things. You can go for, I know hydraulics actually heavier than electric by a few pounds. Oh, 10 pounds, eh? Not an ideal situation. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to tweak the car. I want to get this thing down. Worst case scenario, we can go semi-slicks. Like, semi-slicks are still doable. This is like the, um, 
This is more of a competitor to the C8 with the uh, 2.9060 package. Like base model Corvette versus this, obviously we cost more, but we've got more power. Uh, I'm assuming higher top speed. I'll double check though, because we, we our top speed is pretty fast. Um, better engine sound. It's gonna sound fantastic, probably, and not terrible on gas. 21 mpg is not awful, honestly. Uh, and you got some features such as 19 inch wheels. You got some brakes and other things that are in cars, probably. So what I'm gonna do is design this beast. Uh, also tune everything on, tune the suspension, tune the engine a bit more maybe, probably not actually, I like the numbers, but tune it, so I want to break 3 seconds 0 to 60, uh, if we do semi slicks or not, that's what we're going to do. Uh, so sit back, relax guys, and I hope you enjoy this quick little time lapse of me building the car. Alright guys, so we are starting my build for the C8 Chevrolet Corvette competitor. Uh, of course, uh, this thing is going to look uh, like you know, a supercar similar to the C8 Corvette. It's going to be a little bit toned down than some of my other supercars in the past, but still uh, very aggressive at heart. So I have a basic shape for the headlights that I'm going to build, uh, also the front grille. So I have a, uh, a vent, actually is my headlight housing, basically doing some LED strip around the entire housing of the headlight, except for part of it. I think it's going to be like more like a C shape. Basically figuring out what kind of want, what, what I want to do for the actual headlights itself. So I do end up having headlights inside the headlight housings, an actual headlight fixture inside of my grill fixture, and then adding a big grill at the bottom. So that there's a big grill at the bottom open down already. Uh, just doing a bit of details here and there for the front, adding a proper paint job, and then adding a side vent with a door handle sort of built in on the side. Playing around with the roof now. Uh, then I'm going on the rear end. So the rear end is also a pretty important piece. Of a vehicle and I always find the rears a bit more hard um, and maybe I just get a bit lazy towards the end as well but this one uh, I wanted to do it right so I do try to play with a bunch of different designs uh, at the end of the day though I stick with a similar design to the actual front end a grill with some events on the sides basically attached to it and then some white piping with that as well uh, finishing off with a basic taillight housing and then adding a uh, exhaust cut out where the actual exhaust pipes go I added some rear window louvers for a nice little design touch I think looks quite good a wing on there as well, and playing around with a taillight design, which is actually ending up being similar uh, to my Koenigsegg Gamera competitor. Adding a simple front logo, uh, again similar to my Koenigsegg Gamera competitor, this is the same brand I think. Uh, finishing off the front end a bit more, adding some taillights, and a few more details. I actually finished on the name the Arbora Venturi, um, after I tweaked some stuff. So yeah, overall this is the new for 2020, uh, the Arbora Venturi. I'm not sure what the brand is, but uh, you guys get the picture. My CA Corvette competitor. Uh, similar in length to a C8 Corvette, similar in performance, uh, and similar in price. Okay guys, so the car is done. In front of us is the Arabora Venturi. Again, this is an unnamed brand. I'm not too sure uh, what country's design language this is sort of based on. Uh, we're going to do a quick run-through on the design of the car and go through, through some of the changes to make this car compete against the C8 Corvette. So, on the front we have some very aggressive, very large headlights. Uh, of course, the headlights are pretty much... Pretty much is made uh, by me. So we have a LED strip going around most of the front headlight there with uh, two, I guess, you know, bulbs right in the middle there. And we have a bit of a grill extending past that just to make the whole headlight look a bit bigger, a bit more aggressive, a bit sharper. I like how it looks. Uh, the headlight sort of flows down into this sort of V-shaped grill. This is not a Nissan. This is not the V-motion grill design that Nissan has. It's my own design, I swear. Uh, we have a bit of white piping along with the front grill and then a lot of black uh, plastic trim with it. I personally really like, a lot of people don't necessarily like it, but I do like it. Uh, at the bottom here we have um, just a pretty much a front lip and then a nice vent at the front there. Uh, I like how the front end looks. It's definitely one of my more, uh, one of my more, inf my, one of my more favorite. It's, it, it's a front end, I like it, I like how it was made. Um, some pretty basic scoops on the hood, just to add a bit more detail to the hood. We have dual gas caps on the front of the car. Uh, I like having symmetrical gas caps and might as well have two. This is a performance car, it can have two. Uh, big old mirrors on the side. The wheels here are steel, but I actually just painted them chrome. I'm not sure why they're not chrome. No, they, they are chrome, just kind of... Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so they're chrome. Uh, I personally don't like chrome. I'm a, more big, I'm a, fan, I'm a fan of black wheels. Uh, a dog's barking in the background, which is fine. Uh, I'm more of a fan of black wheels, but chrome is what I went with. Uh, black piping down the side bottom here. The door handle, you can see there is no door handle. Uh, this little black, this little gray piece is my door handle that I sort of made up there. Uh, with a bit of a vent and a bit of a cover there in the vent. I think it looks actually pretty good. I'm happy how it turned out. It is a mid-engine car and it could use some air going to the back uh, where this grill is kind of being used for that. The roof, nothing on the roof. This is a performance car. No need for a sunroof there. Uh, at the back we do have some louvers that I made and you can actually see through them. I like how it looks. It turned out pretty great. I'm a really big fan of the louvers. Um, this is a similar, this is the same brand as I made for my uh, Porsche, not my Porsche, my Koenigsegg Regera. 
competitor, the same brand, and it does follow through with some similar design elements. The back here, the taillights are especially similar to the Koenigsegg Regera competitor, or the Koenigsegg Gamera, not Regera, the Koenigsegg Gamera competitor, sorry. Um, similar taillights, we have pretty much six on each side. Uh, it's all built in, turn signal, everything is all built into one, uh, and I, I can imagine there's probably some sort of hidden reverse light in there as well. A huge wing, this is a performance car, uh, I'm not sure if I like the wing from the side, but I like it from the back, it looks nice from the back and that's, that's kind of important. A nice dual exhaust at the bottom there, and a pretty similar uh, rear end overall to the front. Now a couple of mechanical changes, the car now makes 350 horse and 400 torque. So a bit more horse in the C8 Corvette with the Z51 package and a bit less torque, which is okay. This is a higher revving engine, it's flat plane crank. Uh, they do usually make less torque than a, you know, pushrod V8. Uh, of course the Chevrolet Corvette is a 6.2 liter V8 and we've got just a 5 liter. Uh, so 0 60, it is sadly 2 or 3 seconds with semi-slicks. Semi-slicks, it's, it's not the tire that would have came on the C8. Uh, we can do, we, we can even do, yeah, we, you know, we, we can leave it. On sports combat. It's a bit slower, 0 to 60. That's okay. Automation is obviously not always the most realistic. Um, now, one thing to note here so the top speed is 320 kilometers an hour, limited by uh, like an electronic governor. That's fine. Um, so I went with overall fiberglass panels, like a, like a, you know, like a true Corvette here, steel chassis, uh, double wishbone front and rear. So a bit better on the suspension there. Um, the tires, so 365s and 295s, alloy wheels, a bit bigger on the brakes. Uh, they might be a bit overkill actually at this point, we can actually be a little bit smaller probably. That's okay, that's fine. Uh, no under train, nothing there. Two seats, I'm not sure why they're showing up in the middle there. Kind of a glitch, but that's okay. Sports seats, standard infotainment. Uh, a bit lower on the safety. We can skim there just a bit, electric power steering. We can do variable, I don't know why we don't have variable actually, we can do that. It doesn't really cost much more. Uh, then semi-active and active uh, progressive spring setup basically. Pretty low ride height, 7 inches. So the cost right here. So $62,000 in 2012 dollars, so it's, it's about 70, it's under $70,000, so it's a bit more than the C8 Corvette base model, but if we lower the top speed down, even just send the speed lever down to 200, which is street, streetable speeds, the cost comes down to 54000 which is just over the C8 Corvette. Um, so the top speed limiter here really affects how much the car costs for some reason. Uh, so we'll leave it there, but just the car really is uh, about $8,000 less than what it's showing up. I don't know why it's so expensive. Um, the stats are pretty good. 19 MPG seems fine. Uh, it is pretty light, around 3,000. It's actually lighter than the C8 Corvette. Um, this car is not a 0 60 car. It's, it's a track toy, is what it is. Uh, pretty good weight distribution, not perfect. Um, it does beat the C8 Corvette, though, in quarter mile time. The C8 Corvette, from what I could find, was 11.6. Uh, was it 11.6 or 10.6? I think it was 11.6 quarter mile, uh, where we were getting uh, 10.7. So if you go C8 or quarter mile, um, they were getting, like I'm just Googling right here on from car and driver, 11.2. So 11.2 quarter mile, we got 10.7. So we're, that, that's a fairly uh, good difference in the quarter mile. A little bit high roll angle, that's okay. Uh, overall, the car is a lot of fun to make. So what we're going to do now uh, is jump into BMG Drive and see how this thing actually performs. Alright guys, so we're here in BMG Drive with my Chevrolet Corvette C8 generation competitor. Uh, this thing transfers over awesomely to BMG. Uh, yeah, no issues with the transfer, it looks fantastic. We are going to do one lap of the handling circuit automation map. Uh, basically see if it's thing can get a pretty reasonable time. I've done about a half hour of testing, so obviously uh, not, not the most, and I'm not the best driver. Don't expect great times. The gearing is a little bit short. Definitely very short gears, but um, this is... A car, I think, more oriented towards performance on a track than on a straight line. It's, it doesn't have long gears. It's, for this track, I think it actually works. This application, it works good. So I'm feeling there's a bit of oversteer in the rear. Still with our 365 wide tires. The suspension's not the best tuned, but it's it's pretty good. It's quite neutral. As long as we don't push it to the very, very limit, then it is neutral handling as can be. Uh, I mean, there's not really any body roll. A little bit oversteer there, that's okay. I probably I probably put it down a second gear more often than I should. Cut this over just a bit, that's fine. Well good times around 1 minute 20 seconds is like my record time. So if we could be 1 minute 20 seconds, I'd be very happy. Uh, my current record is I think 121 actually, and that's with a V12 supercar with about 800 horsepower and a V12 supercar. Oh, 
Oh, we would have beat it. We would have beat it. Oh, we still beat it. <laughs> oh, I'll take that. We still beat our record. Uh, that probably would have been a 118 or so, or a 119. Very fast time. I, I think for anyone, that's a pretty fast time on the handling circuit. A 120, uh, crashing at the end. The Arabora Venturi beating out my Quaranta Series 65, which is a 6.5 liter NAV12 that weighs, I think, actually less. Uh, this car, the handling is on point. The brakes are on point. The performance, obviously, um, less is more, I think, in this case. Uh, a lot of fun to drive. We're just going to go for free room here. I'm just going to sort of go for a drive. We're going to go in third person now. Just have some fun, pretty much. Bit of pops and crackles with our NA V8. Just have some fun. Uh, just understand the driving dynamics a bit more. Okay, so it's a lot different driving in third person, obviously. We're going to go the, a little lower the camera because that's a little weird. The louvers look awesome. Very, very small window, actually. The car is, looks super wide, though. It looks very imposing. Definitely a lot of fun. Um, so not too much driving in BMG today. Mostly just automation, building, and stuff like that, because the C8 Corvette's pretty awesome. Uh, I think there'll be a poll somewhere on the screen on the top right, if it hasn't already popped up yet, talking about, you know, your favorite car, if you like the C8 Corvette or not, or yada yada yada, so make sure to check that out. Um, if you guys are having fun watching this, these builds and stuff, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment, whatever, whatever floats your boat, toots your horn. Uh, and make sure to join the Discord, also linked in the description. We've got a lot of automation builders there, a lot of great builders, a lot of just a great community. So join the link to the Discord. Uh, it's in the description. So join the Discord, make an account if you don't have one. Pretty much a chat room, you get notified of all the streams and everything before everyone else. And there's also Discord challenges, basically. Um, this car will be available for download because I like it a lot and hopefully you guys like it too. Uh, let me know if you can improve upon the vehicle uh, in the Discord. So uh, anyways, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.